Okay, let's get the meeting started. Um, let's call the meeting to order on January 10th. First of all, Happy New Year to everybody. We are 2022, believe it or not. Um, approval of minutes. Anybody has any changes to the minutes? Mm. Okay, somebody second. Second. Matt, Matt, second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Already. All right, we have new business. Uh, mural proposal, Escondido Charitable Foundation, Taylor. Now, so go ahead. Okay, good evening, commissioners. So we have um, a few murals to look at tonight. Um, the first one is from Taylor Horowitz. Let me pull up um, his images here. We do have a copy, I think. Yeah, but here you can see it in color here. So this is on um, orange, so between Grand and Second Avenue. Um, I have another image here that will show you that location a little bit better. So, I'm sorry, that's not very... There we go, that's a little bit better. This is just a street view. I just wanted you to see how, um, where the wall was located and where, how people will see it as they're driving by. So it's that wall that's in the alley. This image is kind of blocked by the tree, but when you're actually driving past it, it's quite visible. And that's a little bit better of an image. So it will be on this wall right here. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back to the, the actual image. So here it is here. Um, he provides his color palette. As you can see, it's very um, similar. It's es very, you know, Escondido. Um, the Wonderland theme is, um, I don't recall it. I wasn't around back then, but apparently there was an orange packing company called Wonderland here in Escondido. And so that's where that comes from. Um, and then you see um, the bridge and the other, the fruit and the very, like the agricultural theme of Escondido. Um, he is ready to begin whenever we are. He's been through the appearance committee. He has been to the mural subcommittee. Um, and so we just wanted to share that here with you today. And then he will be ready to begin um, very shortly. Mm -hmm. he has, uh, <clears throat> and he has been approved by the foundation already, right? Funding. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I should have I should have led in with that. That this is not through um, the funding is not coming from the Public Art Commission. The funding is coming through the um, Escondido Charitable Foundation. They had a grant, which we've heard about before, um, and this is one of the winners in that con that competition, what you know, contest, whatever you would call it. Yeah. Yeah, the application. Okay, so I'm all for it. I, I just have a. A question. Um, I like it a lot, and I think it picks up with the history and uh, a lot of different okay. color values. I just have one remark on, on with the word Wonderland. I'm wondering, do you see how it has the lines coming off of the top of the letters, vanishing to a vanishing point? Uh -huh. I'm wondering if those lines, which are the same color, the red is the same as the red background. Those top lines on each letter, I'm wondering if they would look better in the shock yellow than red. It's just, a, it's just an observation. Okay, I can definitely um, let the artist know your comment and then it will be up to him whether he wants to amend that or not. But you mean just the strips back, like so from the points of the W? Yes. I see, so okay. The w has three sets of parallel. Mm -hmm. Going off, everything's going off to a vanishing point, which is great. It shows depth, and it also shows that it's been in the past. You get the feeling of movement a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think you'd even get more movement and more definition if it was in a shock yellow on the top. Okay, I can share that with him. 
I have a question. I don't remember. First of all, did the owner of that building is already approved, right? Yes. And then the agreement to maintain maintain the mural is also taken care of. Yes, it's five years, same as our standard. And after that, and after five years? After that, it becomes the, the business owner. I mean, the artist is agreeing to maintain it for five years. And, and, and then after that, the business owner would maintain would it. Would do it. Okay, sounds good. All right. So I don't think we need to, we need to vote on this? Um, yes, we we'll do. Vote on okay, it. so. You know, I just have one question, and uh, I, I love the mural. Um, I guess I'm, I'm, believe it or not, I'm not old enough to remember Wonderland um, Packing Company. So, I mean, I, and I see up in the corner here, there is a truck with, mm -hmm. I guess, crates that are holding um, the, the fruit. Um, I love the picture. It says everything, but Wonderland really threw me off. I didn't know if Escondido was Wonderland or, you know, it just, I'm just being honest. I, mm -hmm. I, that didn't relate to me. The picture relates to me, but the wording Wonderland, it's, I just wish it was a way to circle back around. Oh, that's a bad word. Circle back around to, um, to connecting that with history. Do you know what I mean? Plaque with the history of um, this a QR. No? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. Um, we have um, Lisa Ruder from the foundation in the audience. I'm gonna ask her if that is part of maybe the the grant possibly, or if not, maybe we could um, maybe even outside of their grant, we could do something like that. Yeah. Um, is this on? Uh, I think. Okay. Uh, it's not on though. That's not. I don't have a very loud voice. Anna Marie, I think you have to turn it on. Or Council Member. Is it yes? Commissioner Velasco. No, no. Yes, that's the one, the green one. I don't know which one. Podium mic. There you go. Okay. okay. Now, that sounds better. Okay. The question about the Wonderland. So originally, this was actually bigger because we all have the same question. Um, so we did ask the artist to make it a little bit smaller, but our vision is, and I'm hoping that you guys will also support this, is that we went to La Jolla and looked at all of their artwork, which was phenomenal as far as a learning um, area, and each of their pieces of artwork had a plaque that went with it. And each plaque not only identified the artist, the title, who sponsored it, but it had a QR code. So behind every QR code was a significant story, just like all the alley art has. So that's where I think that will bridge that gap. And I might be able to bring it up on my phone later, but the Wonderland um, crate is actually something that I hope we are able to somehow bring back within Escondido, because it's a really good, it, it, yeah, if you see it, you'll be thinking, oh yeah, how can we bring that back? So I think we'll, we'll be able to fill that gap with those two things. But our, our plan, and um, Danielle and I have been talking about that, and we've also talked to the DBA, is to have uh, QR codes that link to it. Yeah. Because we actually had the same question. And Taylor had done a lot of work identifying all these pieces that go with it, you know, the grapes, the the trail that goes across the lake, all these, the, the little Victorian house in the yeah. um, area, so. Yeah. Thank you, you to go back? Thank you so much. You know, it really means a lot more when it's explained. Yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, I really love it. Um, it just means a lot more when you yeah. put the pieces together. Well, and you can see the Thank cam, you. Um, the, the barn is actually the barn that's here. There, we've seen other artwork that's had the barn that's in Dixon, uh, Lake? Dixon Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, <coughs> Daily Ranch. Daily, Daily Ranch. Ranch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me go back, or am I talking again? Yeah. I think you're good. 
Thank you. Um, I wanted to add that I do like it very much so. Uh, I'm just concerned that I hope the same topic or theme doesn't start repeating over and over and over. It is historical. It shows part of a condito. Uh, we are a public art commission. It, it should involve other type of art. So yeah, this is lovely. It kind of reminds me of the mural also that is up on the Juniper, up on the gallery. So that's also similar to that. So it's good, but hopefully two in our city is kind of enough. Um, all right, so do we have a motion? I just have one more comment. Um, are there any lemons <laughs> represented in this? <laughs> and no, the reason why I'm asking is at one point, Escondido was almost the lemon capital of the world. So uh, it was very significant how the lemons were grown. I don't think there are any lemons in this specific mural, no. Okay. Okay, so motion. Question. So that Wonderland was a peach packing plant? No, I believe it was citrus. Citrus. Mm hmm. Hmm. Nothing, nothing to do with Henry. So the colors in the, that's why he included the color palette because the colors in the picture are not exactly, you know, what they're going to be. So I would assume those oranges. Oranges, yeah. Yeah, okay. those oranges that look a little more like peaches. They're going to be those one of those two orange colors up there. Okay. And there's grapes at the bottom right. And the grapes, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah. I have a, a question about, because um, uh, I know since this is being funded by the Escondido Charitable Foundation, do, do we have to make them? Because I thought this was more of like a FYI informational thing. I wasn't sure if we needed to vote on it or not. Yeah. I don't think you're voting to approve. I think we just want to, um, I mean, just um, have on record that we have support of the commission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then the motion is to support the? Okay. Yes. Got approach. it. Okay. So, so do we have one? Motion? I, I, I motion to support this piece. Okay. Second? Yeah. I second. Third. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next one. Oh, this is an interesting one. Number two, we are proposed Sol Escondido Charitable Foundation, Mario Toredo. And okay, so this one, um, let's see. This is over on Rose Street by Washington Park. So this is going, this is the location of the mural. The, the first picture there is the entire building. Um, just showing you um, an overview and then the drawing down below is actually um, shows kind of the proposal of how they plan to amend the section which is that far left side um, to in order to accommodate the mural that's going to be there okay well this is just a close-up picture of that section um, so that sign um, will be removed the wooden um, banisters or railings there will be removed from the site and the window will be covered. Only one? Only one window or both? The door will remain. Oh yeah, that's a door. Okay. And this is what the proposal, how the proposal will look. I love it. Um, so it will be a solid color up top. Again, that sign will be removed. This is the mural. I have a, there's a much larger picture in your um, agenda packets if you wanted to see the detail. Um, and then um, I don't know if the silhouettes were included in that. Um, let me see. But they are here. No, they weren't. So you just saw the mural. So they're also proposing the silhouette section um, with the QR codes there like you see. Oh, I and, see. Mm -hmm. And again, Lisa is here if you have any questions about the artist or the mural. Okay. The, the, the painting on the top, the orange, the, is that the owner doing that or is the foundation financing that? We are not, we are funding the mural. Only the mural, okay, because I just drove by on the side of this corner as if going to a grocery outlet and it's really in bad shape, so oh, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to talk. The mural looks amazing. 
Okay, let me start at the beginning so we get the whole background and what we do. So again, I'm Lisa Reuter and I'm with the Escondido Community Foundation. We did go through a name change. That we, we goof it up all the time <laughs> because we are a community foundation. So oftentimes you'll hear me talk about community rather than city. So we cover the San Pasquale Valley and up through um, uh, Lawrenceville well Village. So the, what we all think of as the community of Escondido, we know where the city bounds are. I live outside the city, but Escondido is my city. So um, I'll start at the very beginning. The Escondido Community Foundation uh, started on the path to provide more art in the community following the plaque sales on the Escondido Arch in 2020. These funds are directed to two things, which was art and beautification and emerging needs. And $177,000 of emerging needs, which we kept saying, we'll know it when we see it, think fire fund. Uh, so we got the rest of our funding by February, by March, we were putting um, COVID relief dollars out, which included Wi-Fi for schools, additional health services, and a number of other things. Then we still had the art and beautifications fund. So we started researching what could be done in our city. And you're seeing the outcome of our first projects. In July, we put out a request for proposal, which Danielle was talking about, and you're seeing the first two murals, the Wonderland and the Tortillo Tesaro. I'm speaking to the Tortilla Tesaro mural, which you're looking at. Um, the bright colors are inspired by Mochicon, Mexico, which is where the Santa Cruz family is from, and uh, the highlighting around the athlete holding the world are the avocados and their pickers, the metat, the woman grinding corn <clears throat> with a corn stalk in the background, cows, which are a reminder of the dairy industry, remember Holland Hollandia dairy, there's Queen Khalifa's garden, a roster of the large, a rooster for the large chicken farms, rhino for the wild animal park, now the San Diego Safari Park, music, which is always part of a thriving community, which is the guitar and the clarinetist, the Vishnu in the far right corner is a nod to the Hindi temple being built on the 10 acres of the old Pesqua San Pasquale Road across from Cloverdale Barn and the diversity of the community. There's also vineyards, the strawberry fields, and the workers. Note the mural is framed by the important Hispanic workers who contributed to making this community flourish. The strong heritage in the community was deepened as, a, as as the members have an opportunity to take part in the, in the painting of the mural. So they'll actually, I, I'm sure all of you have seen the creek trail, but um, it's hard to underestimate, it's easy to underestimate how important that is as a, as a transportation hub along that area and how many people walk through there. So all these people will be walking along this mural, being given um, a chance to work on it, work with this artist and also the high school students. I think one's been part of that discussion. Um, and the left side where the silhouettes are will be um, community members again. And behind the QR codes will be interviews with these people, so video interviews. Those people aren't all identified now, but we'll work on that. The artist himself, himself Mario Torero, is a wor world-renowned artist. He has, he's had exhibitions in Berlin, murals in Peru, and is currently working in Costa Rica. His apologies that his positive influence was not able to be here to talk to you today. He's great fun to talk to. If, if you check his website, you'll he, see the brightly colored artwork which he creates to celebrate the community and create community pride with his ac activism. We're honored and looking forward to hosting this proud artist in our community. Any questions? First of all, I really do like it. It tells a story from start to end. Mm -hmm. I do see on the left side the silhouettes seem mm -hmm. very bright and almost a little detracting. I'm wondering if the silhouettes need a lighter uh, tinge of black gray so that they're not so overpowering. Okay. That's just one observation I okay. have. But the second one is, are we using um, paints throughout the city that are graffiti? Are, they, are we still using those paints yeah. that are? 
um, able to be washed if any graffiti. When, whenever we've talked to our artist, we've instructed them to A, use UV proof paints and always are asking for a budget line that includes the graffiti um, proofing. Thank you. I just, I, I've driven by the area and I just noticed there's a little bit of graffiti that um, I'm hoping isn't going to appear anywhere, but I just wanted to make sure. I think the artwork is excellent. Uh, there's a lot of movement in the mural. It, like I said, it tells a story. And um, this is Escondido. Mm -hmm. And it covers Escondido for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. that, that it pulls back from the, the dairy farms to, anyway. Yes. Any other questions? Lisa? Yeah. Um, I just have a comment, and I think that it's, uh, it's beautiful. And it does depict Escondido and all this charm. Um, I, I'm sure that this is kind of a moot point. There, it just looks like the uh, the mural is pushed over to the right. I'd like to see some some um, it balanced a little bit more between the door and the end of that wall. I don't know if that's just the way it is. And the same with the uh, silhouettes. It just looks like everything's pushed out and not. Um, it, I'm a stickler for balance, and that just uh, yeah. I, I think it's just the I, picture. I think it's the picture. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Um, they're certainly using all that space is the intent. And originally it was going to be on panels. They're no longer doing it on panels. It'll be painted directly on there. But you know but, what I mean? If there was some black on the edges there, it would kind of oh, I see what you mean. instead of oh, I see. pushing it to the mm, edge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same with the, with the silhouette. Yeah, that's what you're saying. And the other centered. thing is, I, I think I would condition it with them updating the Pandaria sign. They're taking that out. Okay. There, there is no bakery there anymore. Well, okay. Yeah. So, and um, that was one of the things that the artist said. The artist said, this building needs a little love. And that was one of his conditions on working on the building. So we're working through some of those details. Thank you. Now, again, we're responsible for the mural. Um, so some of the facade is still in play, but we're talking about the mural today. Okay, I'd just like to see it framed on either side so I there was a little black there, so it would, uh, I think it would just pop. Thank you. Uh, I have a question regarding, that is a parking spot. There are several parking spots in front, right? Um, if you, can you show the picture of the whole building? There's enough parking spots on the right, so they, win, they won't be covering the mural, right? No, there's parking straight across. There's plenty, right? Yes, on both, both sides of the lot. Yeah. I think the rest of the, um, OK, well, you're going to talk about the next one, so I'm not going to get into that. I'm going ahead of myself. Yeah, I love it. Can I add something I found out today? about, um, so we had talked about the, maybe moving the, the location, but um, no, we no, we're not. No, 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 I, we were talking, yeah, and it's not going anywhere, but we did get a response from Palomar, so for future murals, I have an appointment with the president, so hopefully we'll have approved walls for, for, the, for the next ones. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So again, any questions? No. Comments? Okay. Again, let's. We need a motion. A motion to support this uh, mural. Okay. Second. Who second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. So now we move on to Charlie, who was supposed to be here and it has COVID, so he didn't make it. Do we skip it all completely and wait for him or what? Um, I, was going to I was going to pull it, but I wanted to at least just show you guys. Uh, we will definitely have to come back because we have not received the full permit application with a funding request or anything like that at, at this point. So, um, but this is um, going to be in the same, on the same building, but the wall that is facing the creek trail. So I have another image here that might help you see that. Hmm. Perfect. Yeah, 
It is a wonderful wall. So it'll face the trail. Um, I don't know yet. Unfortunately, he was supposed to be here today to talk about his mural, but he is ill and wasn't able to make it. Do you have anything that you can add, Commissioner Vargas? Yeah, so um, I, I did meet with them as well uh, this past week. Uh, um, uh, and um, we kind of spoke a little bit about it. So for, for him right now, it's, it's even though he, he's kind of made up this mock-up of, of, uh, of what, he, what he's shown us so far, he, he, there is some moving parts that he's, he's planning on, um, on updating. I think some of the patterning at the top, some of the color schemes as well. Um, the, the, the big thing that we talked about, I think we talked about this in our, um, in our, uh, mural, uh, committee was that, uh, that it, it'd be important for him to put descriptions on each one of the glyphs mm -hmm. to ensure that there's no misunderstanding uh, in regard of what, what they each represent. Um, and, um, and I think, uh, that will be easily done also with the QR code as well. So that's something he'd, he'd want to do as well as add that QR code to make sure that folks know what what each one of these these mean and uh yeah i mean mm -hmm. so i think it's 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 a little bit of a, a work in progress i'm uh, we're, we're i'm trying to work with him to get the the application and process going and um i think he understands too is once once he has everything in writing that's kind of what he has to uh, also um you know uh, present once the whole project is done so mm -hmm. um, he's definitely working on it he's he unfortunately can't be here today but um, but he's, uh, he's, he's definitely on board to, to continue, hopefully, this, this, this project. Yeah. So hopefully we'll have him back. Um, our next meeting will be in March. And so hopefully he'll be ready at that point to present and we'll have an application that we can review. Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Number four, Center City Parkway Sculptures. Um, and can I add there also d slash downtown? <laughs> I mean, would that be okay? I mean, we just add it. Okay. So a um, long time ago, we talked about perhaps using Center City Median as a uh, background, as a base for having a, a, a sculpture avenue. We already have a large one at the end toward um, Trader Joe in that area. And so use the background, use what is there to basically start, you know, placing different type of sculptures. Now, as you know, when um, the Palomar Heights project came along, <clears throat> many artists, most of, many of them from Escondido, presented several projects and only four were approved actually three sculptures and then a wall. So these other artists have already the project. They have the, um, what do you call it? The uh, prototype ready. And so it's basically for us to decide what, why can we use them? We have money, right? If I recollect, we have, do I need to go to the back? We have about a hundred thousand dollars left for. Um, am I correct? Yes, I believe it was one hundred and fifty-six thousand. I don't have it written down here today, um, but I believe we have about one hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars that's unallocated at this point, yeah. so that we could use for future projects. Right. So we have a video. I think it's for. It's really good for you to see what is going to be on Palomar Heights in the corner. Um, there's going to be one across from it. It's all this is on ground. There's going to be a third one in Valley Parkway. And then the wall is across from that. Most of them, all of them are abstract uh, sculptures. And so that gives you an idea what, what is starting by the hospital and how we could move you know, west if you want it from that point. So go ahead. Let's watch this. So this one was not chosen, not approved, but, and it's a little bit long, so maybe we can. Some of you may have seen some of these already if you voted on the Palomar Heights project. So if you just want to let me know when I can fast forward through, I'll go ahead and. 
maybe I can do that. Let me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably right here. So those are four different, uh, they basically, uh, those were for four different locations. Um, he will explain it, but he. And he's using that shape as kind of an anthropomorphic shape, human. Uh, it talks about families and so on. Hi, I'm Rick Alexander, and I'm <laughs> together with Robin Brailsford, Brailsford Public Art. And uh, I'm showing our strategy for uh, how to approach the uh, three locations. And um, our approach uh, took into consideration that we wanted to create something that was instantly recognizable, uh, so identifying and also unifying for the three What locations. I suggest is that um, so, uh, stop the, the explanation, because it's the whole, uh, and right. just show it one more time, just so that Everybody can see what they look like. It's basically the bowling, what do you call those? The billards, yeah, of different heights and different bright colors. Um, and that, that's, um, and the texture, what you saw, the tile, so this would be a mosaic, a mosaic and finishing on the outside. There you go. So they're not painted and they're very bright. So they would look really nice on if you know there's a lawn and you can just kind of spread them around that that's one are we, are we sharing thoughts as we go or sure okay. I mean my initial because this this year you're proposing to put in the middle of the median on center city mm -hmm. so this or or also, think about Grant. We haven't supported the, you know, the downtown uh, reconstruction or resigning. Um, if this would be could go there. So this is one, and I think that if that's enough with you guys, we can move on to the next one. So, yeah, my initial thoughts on on this one is that it's it feels more of like a piece where you would go in person to enjoy, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as opposed to something you drive right. past. Yeah, so, I, agree. I agree. No. Yeah. Where well, you can interact physically. Yeah, exactly. More in and out of. Yeah. 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 I agree. They're cool, though. This is very cool, but. And run scanning glass. Sorry, that audio. All these really wonderful light reflections that are moving in the water. It could be done the water feature as well, but we're highly suggesting uh, to use the water feature, and it would be a very simple uh, way to do it. So that's what we're suggesting. And hoping for. Oh, wow. Doesn't it sound lovely? So the one we just saw was not chosen, the water fountain, that was not chosen. So that's available. Uh, think about that we have the little plaza, the heritage plaza is an area where that could go. Um, so think about that. This one was uh, chosen, so that's going to go, and we don't know yet where, right? I don't, I mean, we know that they're going in that corner, but... When Palomar Heights was here, they did disclose where these were, but I don't recall. There were three pieces. I don't remember which ones were going in which location. Yeah, I think this goes across from the hospital, just in front, coming coming west. Yeah, this one's cool. yeah. I remember seeing this one. Key metal artist. Today I'm going to introduce my submission for the Pacific Heights Project, location three. This is Aspire 2. The original Aspire was a commissioned piece by the City of Vista for the Paseo Santa Fe Roundabout Project Phase 2. Since the installation of that piece, my partner and I, Robert Rossine, have received several inquiries about duplicating that sculpture. We have since decided to do it in a series. We will use the basic fundamental shape, yet we will add individual unique elements 
for each location, creating an original sculpture for that location. I'm aware that they were asking for a shade structure, so we have decided to take the basic structure and add this element of brushed stainless steel perforated shade leaves, creating that shade environment. The human tree form figures will be made from Corten steel with that beautiful natural rust patina, and then the contrast of the brushed stainless adds a really nice element. So that was chosen for the corner of Valley Parkway and I don't know the name of that little street, Iris? Yeah. It's Valley Parkway and the one across. Ivy? Is it Ivy that connects Grand, connects Grand with Valley Parkway, that little way in front of the hospital? Connects Valley with Grand. Juniper, there's Kenya, there's... It's not Ivy. Anyway, it, so this is already chosen, and by the way, she has an amazing piece in where she says in Vista, and then if you just put a second, so the, the Palomar Heights is paying for that sculpture, but she's going to add something, we might want to look into it, if you just put it for a few more minutes, she's going to add an element. I'm also aware bottom. that they were looking for historical significance in this particular location, and I think that can be achieved in the signage aspect or the low retaining wall. And they're going to add. We also thought that it would be wonderful to add and complete this project with these leaf-like love seats made from the same perforated stainless steel. I think it beautifully completes this project and makes a spectacular plaza. It's fun, it's engaging, and it's sculptural, it's artistic, it's functional. I think it's a beautiful piece in itself. Hello, my name is Melissa Ralston. Can you, yeah, so that, that, this is the same art artist by this way. So that one is already paid off except for the three seats. And so that's something we can come back. Oh, I think it's about 20 feet tall or maybe less, huh? It's, no, I believe it is very large, yeah. And I would have loved to see it at the little triangle. That's what I had in mind, but we'll talk. Yeah, that was the idea. All right. Uh, I don't recall right now. Do you remember? I don't remember, but that'd be a, a great addition, in my opinion. I think they did talk about lighting, but I can't remember, yeah, what kind. To see it at night. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We can ask Nina, right? Send her a, a little text, but we don't, we are not financing this project at all. Okay. All right, next one, same artist. I'm a long-term Escondido resident as well as a working metal artist. I grew up in a family of metal workers. My dad was a blacksmith and my brother currently runs a metal fabrication shop in the Midwest. And that's where I was first introduced to metalworking. Today I'm here to introduce a submission for the Palomar Heights project. This piece is called New Dawn and it was inspired by the mid-century architecture of the old city hall. I love mid-century aesthetics. I like their clean lines and their simplicity, and I knew I somehow wanted to incorporate that into this piece. This piece called New Dawn, it represents to me the melding of the past and the future, which is where Escondido is currently at right now. The symbolism of both the clock and the sun and the sun rays is about new beginnings, the movement of time. Um, movement into the future and so I thought it was really relevant to where Escondido is right now especially with this project. The piece itself is constructed of core 10 steel it's called a weathering steel so it has an outer layer that will rust to a certain point and then it will stop so it creates this beautiful natural patina um, it is basically maintenance free. I incorporate Braided several different metals. Um, I used stainless steel as well as Corten and then also some bronze patina. I think the different metals add some interest, some depth, some texture to it. I, to me, this is just a really simple, easy to understand piece. It's very timely and relevant to where we are in the city right now. I want to thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the consideration, Ralston. I'm a long-term resident of Escondido. So that one is available. It's a beautiful piece. Uh, again, it's a tall one, and I think 
she would accommodate it to wherever that could go in the middle of the median if we wanted to but it could also be in downtown right in grand if we have a medium in downtown uh, anyway so that's available and then this one is the same artist with a new one another piece this is a several uh, how would you say cylinders uh, if we could just Go ahead and show it. But oh, and a working metal artist. We don't need to listen. Today, to I would it. like to introduce my submission for the Palomar Heights project called Gabion Towers. You can fast forward a little bit, maybe. Um, and these are different heights. It it will have light, so this would be also beautiful in different areas of the city, in downtown or center. Let's see. Mm. Does she show it? See what she has in her hand? Let's see. Let's see if she's showing it there. Okay. I don't know. Can, can, yeah, can, does she show closer or no? A close up? No, she doesn't. It's just that in the background. So, Except uh, for the, the view that you saw just a few minutes ago, which was not that close up. Okay, so this that one that she's showing basically has, leave it there for a minute, these crystals that will go inside those cylinders and they will be lit. So this will be something you see at night and during the day and there's a several of them. That's another one that is available. I think I think New Dawn was the past one. I don't know. Yes, he let it go. Let play it a little bit and see what happens. As well as the glass rock. With this series, there is so many opportunities that this can be adjusted to fit your particular location. Right. Um, the we can trim down tow towers. The quantity of towers we can make the towers bigger and more substantial. Um, they can be grouped or they can be separated and different placement throughout the property. So it gives you that real sense of discovery as you're walking through the community. You'll come across these beautiful glowing towers. Um, and so it gives it a real cohesive, um, complete mm -hmm. feel throughout the property. Super excited about this piece. Um, I think there's so many opportunities um, that we can work together to design the best fit for your location. So that would look really nice in the median if it was lit at night. And this was chosen already, and that will go in the corner of, of the hospital, corner of uh, Grand and right in front of the old hospital. Uh, it must, and it moves, and it lights at night. Lights up. Hello, I'm Amos Robinson, and thank you for this opportunity to present Beacon. I'm a local San Diego artist and currently have 25 permanent public art installations. Beacon is a unique motorized kinetic sculpture with a slow rotating top piece that contains an illuminated infinity mirror. The piece is designed to have a strong presence standing out both day and night. A beacon, as you know, is a structural guide at all times. It's light, a signal in the dark. The sculpture is a modern take on that concept. And my expectation is that it will become a landmark associated with Palomar Heights project. During daylight hours, the motor drive and lights can be on or off. Either way, Beacon is a visually appealing contemporary sculpture that complements the planned building and plaza on the site. Illuminated at night, Beacon will live up to its name. I designed my sculpture to be robust and easy to service and maintain. Beacon will be fabricated from black. So that it's already approved. Yep. And we're not paying for it. It says Palomar Heights. So I think that's it, isn't it? We don't have it. So there's about four projects that are available right now and that we wanted you to look at. Think about it. Uh, think about the location. Um, we already have this one, the beacon, at the end on the Easter side of Grand. And there's also a mobile 
sculpture in the middle of the median, in the median right before Center City. You can't see it much, it's metal. See, nobody recalls. <laughs> this is so sad, yes. Uh, past Orange, between Orange and, and Center City, and it's the pieces are moving, and it's all metal, and it doesn't have light at night. The most I see, Yeah, I see. I drive past it every day, so I see it. I just want to be clear that we can't just select these artists, right? We, have to, we do have to go through a competitive process. Okay. Our procurement rules will require us to put out an RFP. The good thing is that these artists have their project already ready to go. So they will be able to submit very easily as well as you know, anyone else in the community that would like to submit a project. Mm -hmm. um, once we do that, we don't have to, you know, we can write into the RFP that, you know, we may have funding to do two or three right now, but we'll hold on to your proposals and as money becomes available, we'll, you know, reach out to you to get your projects done so that we don't have to go through that process again. Yeah. We can just hold on to those projects and then at that point, once we've gone through the competitive process and given an equal opportunity to everyone, then we can move forward with whichever ones we want. Yeah. I just wanted to be clear that there is going to be a process. An open, an open process, yeah. The good thing is we know that they had a budget. So they, they knew that they needed to divide $175,000 amongst four pieces. So that gives us an idea of the average, more or less, of how much they would be asking for it, unless we change their dimensions, and in which case. So start thinking about that. I think for the next meeting, I would like to, I will bring up an idea I have, which is basically moving from abstract, which is what we have now, to something a little bit more anthropomorphic, more human, when we come to the corner or closer to the entrance to downtown, which is in the corner of Center City and uh, Grand Avenue by the Arch. Uh, we met um, with Terry and she took, I don't think I sent it to you, did I? Did I send you the video? No, I don't believe you did. Yeah, so she took several videos of, uh, of there. You want to add something? Because once you get to the corner, there's no space to the corner of Grand and Center City. You basically are limited in some areas because there isn't enough space. Right. Um, I'm getting... I'm feeling like right now we have all these little projects and I, I would like to put them into like a priority and one thing that I'm not sure we've ever had any follow-up is James Stone's gonna, art that we did vote on we're, and we're going to talk about that are we okay good um, but Aunt Emery is right we did look I did take a video with my husband's help and uh, there is opportunity for some form of art in numerous locations along Center City, which as you know, is well-traveled. Yeah. And um, it could have beautiful artwork that you could see from a distance as you approach it, then up close, and then of course it leaves you. But um, it would bring people into a welcoming either to Escondido or leaving Escondido. So it is a, a piece of property all along Center City that would lend itself to beautiful work. Exactly. So that's just for your own background and then think about it. And maybe we can share this video with them if they want to so you can look at it again um, and then you can come up with ideas, okay? Liaison report, Washington Park murals, okay. So as you know, I believe, I don't recall if we discussed it at our last um, meeting, but we installed the student murals at Washington Park and just a week or two later, um, many of them were vandalized. So the, the application, which was um, a sticker essentially that was you know, put on the wall, was um, not a good fit for this location. I don't think it was a good fit for the type of wall that it was put on either um, because it was not sticking well. The slump block left spaces where the grout was, which left air pockets, which could get popped and then torn. Um, so there are two murals still remaining. 
uh -huh, that have not been vandalized. So we will leave those up until until they do, if and if they do get vandalized, we will leave those up. Um, we have had discussions with the school district. They would like to come back and do additional murals, but just traditional paint on the walls. And I believe they said um, one, just one or two. They were not going to replace, you know, the three that had been removed. They were just going to stick to one or two because of the time constraint for the students. So. They should be ready. Um, originally, when our meeting was in February, they were saying they were going to come in February. Now our meeting's March. So we should probably see a presentation from them in March on what they're going to propose to replace those murals that were taken down. Yeah, and the two that are left are really well attached, you know, to the wall from the beginning. They haven't been touched, really. It was the ones that were really kind of loose that started falling and then they started pulling little by little until they became, but they, these two are nicely adhered to the wall. And also they had some uh, uh, graffiti, but they put it right in between two. So honestly, I, I, I think it wasn't uh, an intention to destroy because they could have done this with the two left and they haven't. So yeah, it was just not the right match. Um, so, Next one, we'll hear more. Library mural and garden. The mural over at the library is complete. I hope you all like it. It's very bright and vibrant. Um, I hope I saved a picture. I meant to. So the city is going in behind, you know, the muralist. And I don't know if you've noticed, but they've cleared out all the area there. They've cleared out the shrubs. And we're going to be putting in a passive garden for people to walk through and enjoy the mural. There'll also be a large boulder with a plaque, um, oops, with a plaque um, recognizing the library foundation um, and the city of Escondido for their efforts in the garden. So I just want to show you a picture of that. I believe. Library. Mm -hmm. that? They actually doubled the surface. At the beginning, they were going to do half of it. Mm -hmm. Now they did the whole thing. Yeah, so this is the area there in front of that wall. Obviously, now the mural is there. There's a lot of before pictures here, so I'm going to go through them rather quickly. Um, this is just the concept of the design that was approved through the appearance committee. And then here is a visual of what it will look like there. Beautiful. So they've already started the work. Um, they've cleared the area. Once they get back in there to start working, um, we've had a lot of rain lately and a lot of staff out, unfortunately, due to um, sickness. But once we get all of our staff back on track and we get back there, they um, project that it'll take about four weeks to get that all planted and installed. Any idea of putting a couple of benches to sit down and look at that? At this time, we will not be putting benches in. Any reason why not? Uh, we don't want to create a loitering location. Mm. That's what I thought. Okay. But it's beautiful. Very nice. So it'll really, I think, really enhance the, the artwork. Um, they're using some plants to kind of... Um, Mirror. Um, pull from the colors in the picture. Yeah, cool. So it's going to be very, very beautiful. I can't wait for that to be done. Danielle, can you send that picture to me? Sure. Love uh, it. To me too. Uh, to everyone, maybe. It I really does pull the colors from the yeah. artist out. It just makes you feel like you could walk right into that field. Yeah. It changes everything. Mm -hmm. Very I lovely. find it's very thoughtful, and you could be very pensive, and you could sit back or, or stand up and enjoy it and take it in and relax at the same time. Is there going to be a formal inauguration or that's already passed? There will be. Um, I believe it's tentatively scheduled for, uh, for February, like closer to the end of February. It's all going to depend on the weather and how we, soon we can get this garden installed. Okay. Okay, next one is uh, library, uh, Tristan mural. We already 
So this hasn't begun yet, right? No, it has not. So um, Tristan's um, hopefully going to start this month. Um, and I believe he said um, it would be a, oh gosh, now I can't, I'm getting my projects mixed up. I want to say he said maybe a six week project, but his contract is in the attorney's office. So um, I should have that in the next day or so, and we'll send that out to him and have that fully executed, and then he'll be ready to start. I know that he has already begun pr uh, purchasing his materials, so um, he'll be ready to go when, whenever we are, which should be in the next couple of days. Awesome. Wonderful. And we financed this mural, right? We yes, $14,000. We approved it already. Okay, here you go, Je Terry, lighting the way. <laughs> Actually, the master plan update is next. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> this I'm will sorry. be quick. I so we it, extended yeah. the date on the master plan. One of the, co the consultants that reached out to us um, was concerned with the holiday. A lot of people were closed for the two weeks, and so they asked that we extend it. So I did extend the due date. So now um, consultants have to have their, or proposals have to be in by January 21st. So, by the time we have our next meeting, we should have a consultant in place. Um, we should have a schedule of our public outreach meetings. Um, and we can discuss things like you brought up earlier with the themes of the murals and how everything's very Escondido-centric. Maybe we want to make sure that we address that when we're going through our master planning process to make sure that there's variety and, you know, et cetera. So, um, we definitely have, I'm, I'm positive, we're getting two proposals, because I've talked to two people that are interested, um, but the, the information went out to a wide variety of people. So we'll see what we get in, um, but that will be J January 21st. So, they don't have so we'll receive them, how that's gonna work. We'll receive them here at the city, and then um, two of you, I don't think we determined who those two people are going to be yet, but two of you will be on the review committee. So you'll be reviewing the proposals and um, recommending who you would like to move forward with, as well as city staff will be on that committee as well. All right, lighting the way now, finally, okay. Okay, so lighting the way. Their contract is complete. Um, they have said that they are doing the engineering design plans in the first quarter of 2022. So they should be working on those right now. And then once those design plans are at least 90% complete, we can initiate the glare study. The city is requiring that we do a glare study because it's in the median and they're just concerned about cars coming down the road and if it's going to, you know, it, get you know, block anyone's view etc or the sun will you know mm -hmm. um impede their their vision for the for the road so um we'll do that glare study that will take i believe about 17 weeks i think they said um and then um they project a um 10 to 12 months for construction of the piece so I'm looking, I'm thinking we're looking at probably about a year and a half before we see that actually completed. And do, they have, um, do they have funding on that? Um, this, I, I'll need to check in with them. They were fundraising in 2020 and conti will continue to fundraise, but I have not gotten a status update on what their funding um, level is at this point. Thank you. Uh, well, Terry and I met with, uh, I forget his last, his name. Jones, James. James. Yes, we've met with him. <clears throat> and that was in December. Um, and as far as what he, we, we were told he has no funding, zero. My concern is that the city is committing to spend money for the studies for a project that has no funding. Now, if it was a project of 150, 200 even, we could see a way to fund partly that project, but he is uh, asking for $400,000, so it's out of our reach. 
Uh, I'm concerned about the city putting money on a project that has not been funded. And I don't know, what, what do you think about that? I mean, we're reserving a space for them. But as this point, we're holding a space and we have a contract in place with them that they are going to install this. So um, I think the best course of action is probably for me to follow up with them and have that conversation and see where they're at. Is that going to affect their timeline? Um, you know, what what is their, you know, get an update from them on their projected. But the last I talked to them, they were confident that they were going to be able to build this and I assume they're probably um, continuing the fundraising through the engineering design phase so that would give them another three months or so to collect funding um, but I'd be happy to follow up with them and report out to you on what they what they say one difficulty that they have that we're not going to be able to change or influence is that the price of materials are going up at a very high rate I believe they've already gone up 25%. So uh, when you're dealing with an expensive project to begin with, I'm concerned that a year from now we'll be maybe at a higher percent than 25, and I'm sure we will be. And so at what point are we going to know for sure that it's going to begin, that they've bought their materials, that they've secured everything they need? because I can't imagine that he's not going to face another 20 or even higher percent increase. I think by, by the end of the first, what, what, when they're telling me, they're telling me the end of the first quarter, they'll be ready to, to start the, you know, the construction once it's designed. I think by the next meeting, I think maybe we'll have a better idea of uh, where they're at on that. Um, so, I mean, I think we have to give them the time that they've asked for, and we just keep a close eye on it and monitor how they're doing and make sure that the communication is open between them and myself. Um, and we just, we just keep a, a close eye on it. And, um, but they've said that in three months, they'll be able to start the project. I can't, I can't hear you. Can you speak to the... Have they discussed with the city the cost of increase on materials? Because um, No, not that I'm aware of because we're not funding the project. Right. Okay. All right, so we're thinking in three months, we'll have, um, we basically, they have, we should have secured funding. We should have engineered designs <sighs> and an update on the funding. Okay, I'm really looking forward to that, but I am not optimistic at this point, but let's leave it at that. Okay. Um, murals on 15 and Center City Parkway. So this is basically, and I think we showed you last time, the, uh, we showed you the pictures on, I think we, right? Didn't we show them? Um, I think we showed the... Oh, no, no, no. No, when we, we met with Caltrans. Yes. And... So, uh, we showed them pictures of samples of murals on um, overpasses, walls, bridges, things like that. Over and underpasses, yeah. Um, it, you think it would be too difficult to show it right now to, the, to us, to the commissioners? Just I don't have it here with me. Okay, so this is the... I can, I can send it out to you, though. I, I can send it out when I send out the other items. I can send that to you so that you can see some examples. You can also just Google it, and there's yeah, lots of it, examples Yeah, it is there, the tunnel, the tunnel coming into, coming into Escondido from the north-south on 15, southbound. But I discovered the other day, as I was going up on Center City, toward that, that you, we would have to do the back also. Look, it, it is really an ugly, depressing way to welcome people into our city because it's, it's full of garbage and weeds and nothing. Anyway, so we were going to apply to a grant. So the, there's a grant available called Clean California. And um, Anna Marie and I met with um, one of the ladies from Caltrans. And we talked to her about that, and she gave us the guidelines so that we could um, apply if we chose to. Um, since then, I've had conversations with um, my colleagues, and there are 
quite a few concerns about these locations, um, about having to, having to number one, uh, work with Caltrans because sometimes it can take very long and be difficult to work through their processes. Um, but also, you know, having to close down the, the highway um, to, to install the grant. The locations um, were not so um, sure about. So I had a conversation with Anna Marie. I think we need to vet the project a little bit more. She is going to be persistent about her locations, but I think we do need to talk to Caltrans a little bit and just make sure that we really understand uh, what that process is and if this is really a realistic um, project to go after. The grant application is due the end of February, so we do have a little bit of time, but not much. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we just, I think, need to vet it out a little bit more, m possibly think of alternate locations, um, but that's kind of where we are with that right now. Yeah. Um, and um, Daniel gave me some uh, information about the number of is it vehicles that go by day and all of that and uh, wonderful but that specific location is a tunnel at the beginning it's a tunnel at the end is the entrance to the city from the freeway is the exit from the city to the freeway it is a welcoming and, and and you know it's a unique site let's put it that way regardless of whether we do this or not the city is going to have to spend money anyway in that site and do something about it i mean it says a lot about escondido if we come in and it's actually caltrans property and that's part of the concern um that we should try to find a location that is city of escondido property we will have a lot more flexibility in what we are able to do so the grant is uh, through California Clean, what is it called? Clean California. Clean California. Uh, and there's it, it, quite a bit of money available for that. And it's specifically for areas that do need improvement. And overpasses and underpasses are part of those. And Caltrans deals with that all the time. So I'm, I'm personally not giving up. So <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we, I'm going to push it. I think it's so important for us to come into the city and feel proud that you're coming into our city with landscape and a mural. And here you are, you know, and then we have sculptures and so on. So anyway, let's keep on talking until I can convince you. And yeah, <laughs> or somebody. I have one question <laughs> for you. Mm -hmm. um, if this does not go, um, and I, I know, I know, but if it doesn't go, <laughs> yeah. would some form of a large sign welcoming people into Escondido be possible to place at the entrance of it and also on the opposite side of the exit? That would make a profound statement of welcoming and it would be something everybody would see just in case, it's just a backup, it's just an idea. So there's definitely, it's definitely a possibility. There are, um, we have talked about gateway entries and signs like that. There is, um, they are, there are limitations on putting words on, um, on murals, on, on, you know, overcrosses. So you're limited to things like just like the name of the town, like es we could put yeah. just Escondido, you know how the arch has just Escondido, um, but not necessarily welcome to Escondido. So there's, there's a lot of regulation around it, but it's definitely another possibility. Okay, thank you. That's an interesting regulation, huh? Isn't it? It was in, I mean, it was in no, the we... guidelines that they provided. I think they're just concerned about, you know, driving, people reading things as they're driving, you know. Mm-hmm. Ay, ay, ay. I hate that word, liability. Um, yeah, so let's, let's talk about that, and I may um, bring more information next time, but we have a deadline. Do we lose anything in applying before the deadline? I'm sorry, what do you mean? I guess Me I mean, meaning we could always decline if we, if we applied and then we... If we run into trouble and we, we can cannot move forward. That's but definitely a possibility as well. Yeah, and I'm willing to put time on that on, in February to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, financial report.
Okay, so the only thing really new on here is the maintenance program for public art, which is the $38,000. Those other items were on previous reports. But the $38,000 is LEC, um, the artist that is repairing Queen Califia. That is um, the first part of his payment. His total contract was $56,000. And so this is just the initial payment that allowed him to gather all his materials and start the work down there. So that's what that, um, that's what that payment there is. Where is it? I don't see it. Hmm? 38,541, right? Is that what we're talking about? 38,541, yes. Okay. And that is only for that section that was falling apart part of this it's name. basically two-thirds of his contract it's not for any section in particular he the way that we wrote his contract he needed a, some money up front to be able to buy all the materials yeah. so the total contract will be fifty six thousand dollars when it's said and done this was just his first installment to buy all the materials and get the work started they're making the tiles right they just have to make new tiles i believe Yeah, he's working there. You can see him. Yeah, I've received some pictures. I was going to talk about this in the Queen Calipia, um update, but um, and I will add more to it. But yeah, we have received some pictures of um, the, the one green section is now done, um, and I believe he's moving on. But there was a delay in getting the materials, just like with everything else right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we have extended his contract as well. So. Um, that amendment's in the attorney's office as well, and we'll be extending it through the end of March. And if we have to extend it again, we can. Um, but I know they were having a really hard time, and it's been raining, but they had a really hard time getting the tiles here. Yeah. Already. What else? Any questions about that? Mm. Okay, mural subcommittee. Do we have any updates uh yeah we so we met uh virtually on uh december 9th i actually met from mexico <laughs> which is yeah. pretty fun um you know we we talked about the um the november 8th stirco murals that were removed um talked about you know what what happened there uh we also um uh, brought up we had uh, taylor horowitz come in and and um talk about his mural uh, that he's doing through the Escondido Community Foundation, um, and then uh, also the Community Foundation. Uh, we also had the um, the mock-up of the Mario Torrero uh, tortilla uh, mural, uh, which is called Tortilla Tesoro, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and at that time, the location was still kind of pending regarding like where exactly it was going to go. So, talked a little bit about that. So, I'm really glad to hear that that's all been figured out. Um, also, uh, EUHSD is still planning to continue the murals and, um, and we're are working to create about one or two murals for Washington Park to uh, take over those ones that were uh, taken down. And um, they, they we were going to be ready to present at our meeting in February, but now that it's been pushed back, now it's going to be March. Uh, we also had another um, gentleman join us, Jaime Vasquez, who's been uh, coming to our meetings, uh, also presented an idea for a mural. Um, and uh, the design's beautiful, um, but I, I don't think I have any pictures available here. Um, he, his, his location that he's looking at is uh, on the specialty market on the North End Midway, but he's still kind of working out the kinks of, uh, and finding out. If, not, if that place doesn't work, he wants to find a place that, uh, that he could have it at another location. Um, so yeah, and that was, that was it. Yeah, the location is that specialty market on El Norte and Midway, I believe. But he hasn't received an answer. But yeah, that, that could be moved somewhere else yeah. perfectly well yeah, yeah, to of. maybe to downtown. Okie dokie. Thank you. Queen Califia, subcommittee. You want me to take this, Patricia? <laughs> I'd love you to. Just to say that uh, the, it's just getting so exciting down there to see so many people from so many different walks of life to, and having to turn them away sometimes because we're driving away as they're coming in. And so we need more um, docents, of course, but uh, it's, it's exciting to see the, the work being done and, and let, you know, even though 
the work is in progress. You can see there's progress being made. And um, it, that's very exciting. We've um, had a few meetings, uh, Marty and I with uh, Danielle, and they've been uh, very good meetings and to see some progress and different things that we'll, we'll be able to report later. But if you'd like to finish this, go ahead. Sure. Um, I was just going to add that um, a couple of things we're doing down there. Um, we've we've brought some new supplies for the Queen uh, Califia docents. So um, they used to hold, they used to carry all of their materials in a, you know, like a reusable grocery bag. So we've purchased like a hard plastic box that has file folders so that we could put all the forms in with all the information so that it's keeping it nice and organized. We're looking at all those forms and revamping all those forms and making sure that they're all clear. We've got the little um, gem kits so that we can have those out. We've purchased a table uh, for the queen so that um, they can put the gem kits out so the kids can like kind of have fun and, and see what they what they're looking for when as they're going through. Um, we also are encouraging we have a sign in book. We're really trying to see where our guests are coming from. As docents, I mean, you guys that, that have done the docent program before, you know that we get people from everywhere. We get people from Italy, from France, and we really need to start building that story about how many people come to Escondido to see this one of a kind um, art piece. So we're trying to gather that information. Um, as far as the um, um, repairs go, they're moving along now, a little slower than we anticipated, but um, they're moving along. Uh, we have um, the, the main snake wall, the, the larger sections that were missing tile, those will be repaired. And then we're also looking at, there's a large crack in the floor that we've had covered with a mat for quite a while. And Leck was nice enough, Leck the artist that's working on the project, was nice enough to remove some of the cookies in the floor so that um, our public works team can come in and really take a look at what's going on. We think that it was a tree root that was pushing up the tiles, um, and we have since removed that tree. It will take a little bit of time for that, those roots to die, but we feel that if, if that was in fact the case, then we can make the repair and it should stay, because I believe the repair has been made two or three times in the past already. So um, with the removal of the tree, hopefully this is the last time that we have to do that. So, so that's happening. Our goal to get that floor done is April, because there is a display that's going to be, or an exhibit in La Jolla, yeah. is that correct? Yes. Um, so we are trying to get that repair done by April so that she, our Queen Califia, is looking her best when we feel like we'll probably have a, an influx of people coming to see her. So um, that's the goal. Um, as part of the um, federal funding that the city received, the ARPA money, the ARPA um, COVID federal relief, um, we have allocated $250,000 to develop a um, community space next to the Queen Califia um, for private events, for fundraising events. Um, we have talked with the California Center for the Arts about potentially partnering with them so that maybe the wedding ceremony happens down at the Queen and then the reception happens back at the Center for the Arts. So on my to-do list is to write an RFP this month for the design of that space. Awesome. So it'll basically be a concrete pad with a, some type of canopy or gazebo over it. Um, so that's pretty exciting. There's going to be, there's, you know, always a lot more involved than you think that we'll, we'll have to bring in some kind of walkway. Um, we're thinking an area maybe potentially for food trucks and that type of thing. So that is in the works and coming soon, hopefully. <laughs> exciting. The, the path, you know, the cement path would be on where the orange trees are? Yes. Okay. So, and coming on from that side into that also yes when we were out there we talked about it would be probably a little bit easier when you first come into the walkway or the the dg path that leads down to the queen right on the right hand side there's a lovely flat area that would be perfect but so we were considering putting it there but i feel like it's too far away 
So we're, we're sticking with our original plan to, to be right next to the, to the sculpture garden so that it's easily accessible to go in and you know, out and from the, from the event space into the garden and back and forth. Mm -hmm. Sounds exciting. Um, we have held two sound bowl events at the Queen. I don't know if you're familiar with what a sound bowl is. It's a type of like meditation. Um, and so we had a woman that reached out and she was wanting to do fundraisers for Queen Califia. So she hosted her class there. She's done two. I don't know if she'll do any more or not. We'll have to have those conversations. But she um, gave us, she provided 50% of her of her revenue from her classes to us. So we've established a separate fund for um, donations and the intention of those funds is to help fund future maintenance on the Queen. We'll see if that's some, one of our, I'm sorry? It's a start. One of our, um, the other member of the, um, Mural subcommittee um, would like it to be split so that sh some of that money can be used, say, to host more events or, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. So we'll see how that goes. But right now, as, it, as the way that I envision it, those funds will be used to maintain the, the garden moving forward. Are you guys talking about uh, or have you talked about maybe an entrance fee or is that out of the question? No, that's definitely not out of the question. We have talked about that when we did our last fee update. We do it every year um, or every year and a half. Um, we did add a fee. We just have not implemented it yet. So if that's something that you guys would like, I can bring that back to the next meeting and we can, I can show you the fee structure that we came up with. I, I believe it's just like $5 or something a person. Um, not for just general admittance, like because I think it was Nikki's intention that this was free and she wanted people to experience it. But we have a lot of groups that come in that um, use our docents and they, they have, it's a private group, they're charging, you know, they're charging their attendees and then they're coming in and getting a wonderful tour from us. So it's, it's like the larger organized groups that are requesting a dedicated docent. Those are the ones that we would like to start potentially charging maybe $5 a person or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It needs to be affordable so everybody can enjoy it also. All right. Um, item from commissioners. Do you guys have anything you want to talk about? Add. Um, I wanted to add the change of calendar. So is it official now? We're starting in January and we end in November. That's, That's correct. Okay. So our next meeting will be March. Okay. Future I and just for just for information, why we did that was because we always end up canceling the meeting in December because people are traveling or just have, you know, other obligations because of the holidays. So um, we thought it might be beneficial to switch the the month the every other month that we're meeting. Starting in January. Okay, for the future agenda items, I wanted to add if we could somehow coordinate with the downtown with Julie, since um, we haven't really proposed anything formally to support the downtown uh, association rehab, if you want to call it, and maybe come up with some ideas in what way. I know she solicited money for that um, kiosk which is not necessarily an art piece, but definitely we haven't decided on anything. So she can see the, the video of the Palomar Heights if she would be interested, if they think that would be. I think the Heritage Plaza is a beautiful part uh, of the downtown that we could maybe put some of those arts with lights because it doesn't have any light at night. Um, Maybe she could update us as if there's going to be a medium removed completely. They were not sure, so we don't know if we could. Well, I think you're about to find out because the construction started today. Yeah. Of Grand Avenue. So um, by the time we have our next meeting, they'll be well under, it'll be well underway. I believe it's supposed to be finished in March. But she would know if they're planning to remove the whole median, right? Because it wasn't necessarily... Decided. They are. They are removing All of it yeah. from beginning to end. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's looking quite depressing with the hospital halfway gone, to be honest with you. Right? 
Okay, so anything else, anybody? Um, any agenda item for the future for the next meeting in March? No? I think um, the, the schools will probably be ready to present then, so. Charlie. Uh, the, the schools, the school district. Oh, okay. For the, yeah. for the thesis at Washington Park, and uh, um, I believe uh, Charlie should probably be ready by that point also with his piece as well, so I'd probably want to see that on the agenda. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. that's it for now, I think. So Charlie and then that one. Mm -hmm. That's it then. So it's a little bit long of a meeting. It's 625, and we are adjourning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.